Okay, have you been working on that? Good. Now, did you take a look at the question? Um, what do you want? Oh, uh, maybe not. Notice that, uh, what is the question? Are we doing this one up here? Yeah. But we have to look at this in order to do it. Okay, so just to identify which step yeah. is which. So in this particular problem, so the, the, well, let's see, he's giving you, here's the overall reaction. Mm -hmm. And he's shown some of the steps in the overall reaction. And he simply wants us to label each of these as either initiation, propagation, or termination. And in this particular case, he didn't even put in any arrows. We just have to look at the starting materials and the product. So for this overall reaction, the question is, is each of these termination, initiation, or propagation? Well, let's start with this one here. Does this look like initiation, termination, or propagation? Termination. This first one, number 10? Oh, propagation. I think that's right. How do you know? Because it starts with the non-radical and a radical. Right, and ends up. Ends with a non-radical and a radical. Good. Incidentally, is this propagation step one or propagation step two? Propagation step one. Yeah, remember, first we have to take the hydrogen in order to make room for propagation step two, where we add the halogen. He didn't ask you that here, but he could have asked you that. This is propagation step one. We're taking a hydrogen to make room. And how about this? Yeah, termination. No, termination. Good. And how do you know? Um, because you have two radicals, and you're ending with you can see how that really does terminate things, because there's nobody who is reactive here anymore. Very good. And then this step. Initiation. Yeah. And bromosuccinamide. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we start with no radicals and we get radicals. All right. So that's a likely way for this to be tested. And you can see he reminded you that this was the step that needed energy. Mm -hmm. Well, let's try page five. Try uh, the first question. So far. Um, so now I need to add the bromine to create. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm a little stuck there too. excellent guess that turns out not to be right. <laughs> but uh, I had to look that up myself. I didn't remember how that works. So one thing I hadn't remembered is that when you do this, even though you have NBS, you also have small amounts of Br2 at the same time. Okay. You're, it's, there's no, you don't have to write that down. It's just understood. It won't so, normally be written down, but it's understood there's also a small amount of diatomic Br2. So this next propagation step is the same as in a nor normal halogenation. I didn't remember that.
Okay, so what's our product? Um, this is our product. This is our product, right? This and who? This one, because it keeps going around. It's propagation one and propagation two. Yeah, this is so. These are our products. Yeah. Not the radicals, because the radicals are going to keep participating oh, just the, in reactions. Yeah. And in fact, they probably don't care about this product. We care about this organic product. Okay, now, were we forming a stereocenter here? Um, yes. Yeah. Now, this particular problem, he didn't say, he didn't specifically remind you to focus on stereochemistry, so I don't know if you would care about that here or not. But if you have the safe side, Why does the bromine take this hydrogen and not a hydrogen from a different carbon? Because it's adjacent to the other one. And why does that help? <laughs> because it's um, more stable. Because how does the double bond stabilize the radical? What's the name for how it does that? Oh, because it's a. It's the resonance argument. Oh, the resonance. Remember that there's another resonance structure where um, this unpaired electron is someplace else. So I have to draw those two, don't I? That's a good point. Maybe there's another product. But. Oh, it's the same. That's right. In this case, he gave you a starting material that's so symmetric that it doesn't matter which resonance structure we attack. So we didn't get hurt by ignoring the other resonance structure here. But that's something you've got to watch out for. Um, if you're doing an allylic halogenation, you have to consider all the different resonance structures that could get attacked. If the resonance structures are equivalent to each other, then you only need to show the attack on one of them. So in this case, it didn't really matter that much to show the resonance because uh, these are equivalent to each other. If we had attacked the hydrogen on this carbon to put the radical over here, that would not be resonance stabilized because it's too far away from these pi electrons. And it'd be wrong, right? Oh, yeah, that would definitely be wrong. Yeah, because this is highly selective. Also, you should consider, would the, would the bromine be willing to take this hydrogen? Yes. Yeah. However, because of symmetry, it doesn't matter whether it takes either of these. Maybe on another problem, though, the carbon on one side of the double bond might not be equivalent to the carbon on the other side of the double bond. So you have to check the carbons on both sides of the double bond. As well. And if it was fluorine, it would take one of the others because there's so many more of those types of hydrogen? Yeah, except I don't think he would use fluorine and chlorine for allylic halogenations. Okay. I think for allylic halogenations, you're going to focus on bromine. Okay. Um, because the interesting thing is the selectivity for the allylic carbon. 